Are the entry-level guitars from various manufacturers really all that different or do they just give you an illusion of choice? Let's have a look. What's up guys and welcome to Tuck TV. In today's episode, we wanted to talk about a topic which we get asked quite often. We get a ton of questions from the viewers out there asking us about electric guitars from various manufacturers under the 20,000 mark. And when I say 20,000, it's 20,000 Indian rupees, not $20,000. Which guitar should I go for? Do I go for A or B or something else altogether? The fun part is when you actually go down to the specs of these guitars, well, things kind of start repeating in a pattern of sort. They have the same hardware. They share the same pickup configurations and the electronics that it actually comes with. Generally, the same woods are used on the body and neck. And if you actually think about the manufacturing process, most of them might have actually come out from the same factory. So this brings us to a very important question. Are all the guitars in this price range pretty much the same other than how they look? But one thing to keep in mind is there are going to be a few guitars which kind of break the norm and kind of do provide you with a very unique experience. With that, let's look into a few models in the below 20,000 rupee mark, you know, entry range and discuss about them. Not only that, but we're also going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages that the different manufacturers offer in this price segment. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Now, Ibanez is one of these companies which offer you guitars that can span all the way across the musical spectrum. You have artists of every kind all the way from jazz to death metal who are using these guitars. And well, they are one of the biggest brands out there. So coming to the segment, what we're looking at, all of the guitars which we talk about here are the ones which come under the Geo series. Now the Ibanez Geo is a more affordable side of their popular models which are actually available out there. And it's easy to identify the Ibanez models because of the fact that they have Geo written on their headstock. And also their model name starts with a G. Now, if it's the Ibanez RG series, these are usually the GRG and the GRX models. If it's the SA series, it's the GSA and so on and so forth. Now, I started my electric guitar career with the Ibanez Geo models, the one which you see right here, the Ibanez GRG 121. Now, coming to the specs of the guitars, most of the guitars offered in this range usually come with a basswood body or a poplar body. They come complete with in-house electronics, pickups and the hardware as well. Talking about the quality of these guitars, these are really well-made instruments for the price point they're set at. And to be perfectly honest, the hardware is one of the most standout features of these offerings. Even though I've been using this guitar for a better part of the decade, the hardware still holds really good. Especially the tuners because, well, I did actually face the necessity of changing them. Talking about the pickups that these guitars come with, they're not exceptionally good, but then they're good enough for anybody who's kind of starting off in their home recording phase or any live gigs out there. Even though Ibanez is actually known for having the most thinnest necks around, the Geo necks are surprisingly not all that thin. Now these necks are a bit beefy but not as thick enough as the ones that you get on the Fender or the Epiphone models. But yeah, these are really comfortable and you can play pretty much almost anything you want on them. Now these guitars make really good bass lines for your mod projects out there. And even in stock, I don't think you'll actually end up with a lot of problems or complaints either. Another thing which I love about the Geo series is the fact that it comes with various pickup patterns. I've seen models which have had the HH configuration, the HSS configuration and the HSH configuration as well. So yeah, go on ahead, choose a body type which suits you, the electronics which suit your music and well, you not look back at this decision. All right, so Jacksons. Now, these guitars have a heritage of being absolutely metal. They have been around for a really, really long time. They look great and they play great. I know this because I own one. So what do you see behind me is the JS227 that sort of fits into this, uh, you know, bracket that we're discussing. It's a great guitar and like most of Jackson's guitars, it's kind of light, it's ergonomic and very, very mod friendly. I mean, we have done a lot of videos linked in the description as well in terms of some of the modifications I have done and even more extensive ones that Vishesh has done. And the guitar is held up beautifully. I think one of the highlights about at least this JS227 uh, is both the neck profile and what they call a compound radius fretboard, 
where it's nice and chunky up top and as you sort of go to the shredding area becomes nice and flat which makes it easier to you know go ahead and solo so that's definitely sort of the high point about the guitar and that's what i really really loved about it having said that the pickups can be better i'm not saying the bad is just that within that entry level range there are others who make slightly better pickups and not to forget the tuners are definitely not up to the mark they will give way in you know t minus 2 years so that's sort of the low point about this guitar and that's something you have to watch out for now coming to the esp ltd offerings in the entry level guitars the 10 series of guitars was usually the only guitars which you could find So ESP Ltd had released a 10 series with four models the Viper 10 the M10 the F10 and yeah the EC10 but with that said quite recently ESP Ltd did release the M130 which is a whole new story now talking about these offerings i want to talk about these two things separately which is the 10 series and the M130 separately starting off with the 10 series guitars these were some of the most well made guitars in the price range Although they did give you the bang for the buck, they did have a few shortcomings. Talking about the positives first, they came with some of the most shred-friendly necks of all the entry-level guitars. Quite honestly, among all the guitars that I've tried out in the entry-level, this had the most thinnest neck and the most well-shaped neck. And also due to the uniqueness of the shapes that it was offered in, it kind of suited everyone if you were somebody who wanted a much more classic les paul feel you had the ec series or if you're somebody who wanted to go full on death metal you had the f series as well now coming down to the features which are common among all of these guitars all of them came with a tom bridge a basswood body and a maple neck Now coming to the scale length the M and the F offered a 25 and a half inch scale and the EC and Viper came in 24 34. Now coming to the shortcomings of these guitars the pickups were actually the most weakest link. Among the various manufacturers these were some of the more dirtier pickups. Now I'm not saying that these are bad pickups you know they were just slightly muddy and especially if you're somebody who's a beginner to the electric guitar world you wouldn't actually notice it. But once you start tweaking around with the EQ and the tone that you want you kind of start realizing that yeah you need something better. Now the tuners are another thing which I like to talk about because these are not essentially bad tuners but over a period of time say like 4 to 5 years you do kind of end up with a few tuners becoming loose or tighter because I've had that happen to a few tuners as well. Essentially the bottom line is it does not hold its tuning. Now that was everything about the 10 series of guitars and moving to the M130 it's a mixed bag of features that it comes with. The best thing that the M130 has going for it is its amazing looks. And I think the reverse headstock kind of is the biggest attribute which adds to its looks. Now this is the only offering of the ESP LTD below the 20k series which actually gives you a HS hedge configuration of pickups. And that paired with a 5A selector makes sure that you have a dynamic selection of tones to choose from. And let's not forget this is the only guitar which actually comes with the tremolo in it. But with all of this said, I did feel that the hardware is something which is say subpar compared to the 10 series. And also the wood didn't actually feel all that great. This might be one of the places where ESP LTD is actually cutting down corners. Now the neck profile was something which is pretty similar to what the 10 series has to offer. So playability wise they're almost the same, it's just the construction which is different. So yeah, if you're looking out for some crazy designs and well a few killer looks, ESP is the way to go. Next up we have Cort. Now I've owned plenty of Corts and they're decent guitars, very very affordable. and for the price point they do offer plenty of bells and whistles and what i mean by this is for the price you're paying you're getting some fairly decent stuff on the instrument that you buy quality is fairly decent uh, i have noticed this in the entry level guitars as well as the basses the other thing is the way they're priced they kind of have some value in the market it is kind of easy to resell them uh, so you know that's one big benefit that you have again very very mod friendly guitar so in case you are looking to go ahead and uh, try out and experiment with stuff uh, cots are definitely guitars you can consider because they have decent amount of quality and at that price point you really feel like you can take a chance the electronics can be better but having said that it is built to a cost and that does reflect in the entry level series 
Now, before we even go into the details of the Schecter SGR series, let me just put it out there that this is currently my favorite entry level segment of any of the manufacturers. So talking about the guitars themselves, you have quite a bit of offerings when it comes to the models. You have the classic C shape, the oven shape, the solo shape, and well, the banshee shape as well. Not only is the fact that all of the hardtail version of these guitars come below the 20,000 mark, there are also a few models which host the SGR Floyd which comes under this price point as well. One thing to keep in mind before you guys actually go out there for the SGR series is that all of the guitars come with the same humbucker humbucker combination. So if you're somebody who's looking out for say a HSH or a HSS, yeah, you're kind of out of luck. Quite honestly, the pickups that these things come with are one of the most cleanest pickups that I've seen in the entry level. So coming to the construct of these guitars, well, all of them come with a basswood body and a maple neck. And well, the neck is decently thin, I would actually place it between the ESP and the Ibanez when it comes to the shape. But for sure, this isn't a neck which is gonna stop you from playing anything that you want. Now, coming to another aspect of these guitars which I personally love, it's the hardware that it comes with. Even though all the hardware is in-house, they kind of hold their own up against, you know, the bigger branded names out there. And well, coming to the choices of bridges that they offer, you want a Tom Bridge? They have them. You want a Block Bridge? You can get that. And hey, you want a Floyd Rose? They have that as well. Come to think of it, the SGR Floyd Rose is something which I haven't had, like, say, a long time review of. So if you're somebody who has the SGR with the Floyd Rose model, let us know in the comments down below on how well it fares. So all in all, when you think about it, you have a really good range of the body shapes which it offers, the kind of hardware it comes with, and all of this combined with the pickups which I told you about, it must be pretty clear about why I love these guitars. Next up we have Epiphones. Now Epiphones get their heritage from Gibson, which is honestly quite a big heritage to have. Um, this also means that their guitars have this sweet warm Gibson tone if you want to call it that and it also comes with the Gibson scale so in case you are a fan of the 23.75 scale these guitars definitely have it and you can consider that. The biggest advantage that you get with an Epiphone is its price because Gibsons are way more expensive and oh I'm not saying they do everything a Gibson does but for that price point you're getting a lot of it that you can do. So, you know, that's a great advantage to have. Quality is a bit of a mixed bag. Sometimes you're going to end up with guitars which are really, really good quality and sometimes not so much. Setup is another thing that you might need to look out for. It's again a mixed bag because I remember uh, playing the DR100, which is an acoustic guitar sometime back and wasn't really set up. But then again, it's a very personal thing and setup means different things for different people. So you might want to watch out for that. Ah, the Fender Squires. Now these are guitars which come down with a lot of legacy in their names. But the bigger question what we need to ask ourselves is, do they actually hold up to that legacy? Coming down to the offerings which is there from the Fender Squire, we have two different series which kind of match this price point. Now one of them is the Bullet series and the second one is the Affinity series in which a few of the models actually come near the borderline of the price point which we are considering. Talking about the Bullet series first, these are guitars which are more focused towards, you know, your beginner guitars who are just kind of dipping their toes into the electric guitar world. Now these guitars are not bad by any measure, but then considering that the peers that they come with, they could have actually offered a lot more. Even though the Bullet series hosts a lot of models of the Strat, the Tele and the Mustang, it's pretty evident when you play these models that Squire is actually cutting down on a lot of corners. And the biggest corners which are cut are actually in the electronic section and the hardware section. Which when you think about it is a very essential part of the guitar which you're buying. The pickups which come stock with these guitars are well just okay when you think about it. Now these pickups are not exceptionally good and nor are they really all that bad. But when you start listening to it, you kind of figure out that it kind of lacks a bit of that, you know, tone what you expect from these guitars. And coming down to the hardware and especially the tuners, now there are a few guitars which actually come with just covered tuners, not even the sealed ones. When you think about it as a whole, they do come with the legacy what Fender offers, but with a very 
small piece of it. Now the Affinity series on the other hand is a bit more superior than the Bullet series. They do come with better hardware and pickups but it's not a remarkable step up when you look into it. What you do get with the Affinity series though is the better craftsmanship what it is made with and well the playability is a lot more better. Now I know both of these are interrelated but then they do make a lot of difference when you actually pick up the Affinity series. Now the bottom line is even though you go for either of these series keep in mind that the pickups and say the hardware especially the tuners are something that you have to think about changing as early as possible. But hey you can't beat the fact that you have the descendant of an iconic guitar with you. Okay and finally knock off brands. So what I mean by this is these could be sort of local manufacturers here in India based off where you are um, who are making copies of well-known brands or making their own stuff. What you got to keep in mind is they're cheap, 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 really cheap. What that means is it's great for projects. So if you want to, uh, you know, go ahead and try something extreme or if you're trying modding for the first time, these entry level guitars, um, you know, make a lot of sense because if you go wrong with them, you would have paid very, very less. So it doesn't hurt your pocket. Our first modcaster project that we had done on this channel was also done on a knockoff guitar. That brand was called Amaze. Again, all of it is linked in the description. So in case you want to see all the mods that we had done to that guitar, you can check that out. Of course, the flip side to this is because it's cheap, everything on it is cheap. Having said that, it can be a mixed bag situation as well. We've come across plenty of instances where you have these knockoff guitars and then you know for some reason they just set up well and work better than you expect them to because at the end of the day it's a guitar it depends on how the luthier worked on it you know how it was built sometimes you get a bad batch sometimes you get a really good one so you know you got to be aware of what you're getting into it's just that unlike the likes of a court where you know while quality is a mixed bag there is a certain degree of quality you can expect here it's a bit of a wild card game. You could end up with something really, really good or not. Well, with that, we've tried to cover our bases with most of the biggest manufacturers out there. We do hope this video kind of sheds a bit more light into the entry level guitars which are out there and about the choices that you guys need to think about. And also help you choose what your next guitar should be. So what do you guys think about it? Are the offerings of these manufacturers really all that different? Or is there one centralized blueprint that all of these models actually follow? We would love to hear what you guys think about the entry level guitars from these manufacturers. So make sure you hit us down below with your views on these guitars. Let us know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see. So if this is the first time you guys are coming across our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time we release a new video. Now we have a lot of content with regard to experiments, original contents and well a few funny ones as well. So this is Top TV signing off and as always stay safe and stay metal.